Hello, beautiful souls. We made it to Friday. <laughs> it's been a heck of a week. And if you're anything like me, you have found your solace outside in nature. I'm very happy that it's remained as warm as it has in my current locale. And I've been able to get out in the water. And I'm very grateful for that. So I want to remind you to hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Uh, balance your electrolytes with Himalayan salt or Celtic sea salt and get your grounding in. It's your best friend. I promise. Today is another shadow work series video, and it is going to answer some questions of um, when people come to go, okay, I never heard about shadow work and I'm not even sure if I need to do that. And if I do, how do I get started? So I've hinted to this before. Um, but I'm going to break it down and hopefully it's in a aha moment for you. So as you're going about your day-to-day -day life in the matrix, you have probably felt an internal dialogue. Maybe it's a very faint whisper in the back of your mind. Maybe it's this recurring thought. Maybe it's just an uncomfortableness with something that you've always done. And that is your intuition. And that is your internal gnosis. And that is the nudge for you to stop and reevaluate whether this act is something that is in your highest and best good. Your body gives us clues, right? Your body receives clues from your higher self, from your guidance. And it really can't be quantified because every energy body receives messages differently. For me, I know within a few seconds if something is for me or not, and it is unquestionable. Now, before I did not have that clarity and I him hauled around about things that was, I was usually pretty decisive, but what played into my ability to make these decisions wasn't intuition or it didn't seem to be intuition. It seemed to be more my brain making logical decisions, which really didn't turn out so well for me many times because I was ignoring my body cues. I was ignoring the headaches. I was ignoring this spike feeling in my brain. And that I found out was source going, no, <laughs> this is not for you. So with that, I say what I described to you is not an absolute this is very general, but it's also very common. Okay. I, I have these conversations with, with clients all the time. And so I hear it from a diverse population of people all around the world. And it's very similar because it is the waking up. It is the awakening process that you're going through. So every time you feel that, that nudge, whatever it, however it manifests for you, it's you, you're being asked to take a pause, to take note of the person, the place, and the thing. It may not be a full stop, no, turn around, go back the other way. It may be, you can do this, but you shouldn't do it with these people. Or you can do things with these people, but not this action. So there's all sorts of different scenarios here. That's why it's really important to be clear. So you, you can just quickly ask your higher self, is this in my highest and best good? And just take the, the work out of it. It's a lot simpler that way. So a lot of times when you're triggered, those triggers are putting a pin in the map of your soul. That is where you need to dig in to do your most important shadow work. Now we're not triggered on every single thing that we need to do shadow work about, but most of the, the big, the big ticket items. Yeah. You are triggered because it's core wounds attached to that. And again, you may be triggered by a person, place or thing or word or event where you, it has nothing to do with the actual source of the event that needs to be healed, but it's what's bringing attention to it. And so it's literally your, the universe saying, heal yourself, stop continuing to ignore this problem and heal yourself. So 
as we go through our self exploration, we really have, we call it dig deep. We've got to dig deep. You may find that you've had repressed memories. You may find that things come up as soon as you recognize it consciously, that door flies open and you're flooded with feelings and emotions and things like that. It's also um, very common for beings that have survived certain events to just kind of live in that, whether they label themselves as survivors or they label themselves as victims or they label themselves as warriors, like whatever the label is, but it becomes a part of their identity. And so they're always talking about it, talking about it and talking about it, but they haven't really dealt with it to the point that they're no longer feeling triggered and they're no longer feeling like a victim, like a survivor, like they have to be a warrior. See, the the hope is that you go through your shadow work and you can lay your shield down, that you're not actually going into battle every moment of every day, which for a lot of beings prior to being clear and prior to doing the shadow work, their life literally feels like a battle from the time they open their eyes to the time that they go to sleep. And sometimes during the night too. So when we live in and relive that pain without actually coming to terms with the source of the pain and LFGing it, sitting in love, forgiveness for all parties involved and giving gratitude, then you're just feeding it. You're giving it energy. You're giving it life. It's not, it's never going to die. It's never going to go away because you are always giving it life, breathing life of your breath into the words that you speak about of this trauma. I don't know if you've ever thought about that, but that's exactly what's happening. You're giving energy to something that, that should have been dealt with a long time ago. And you're giving it in a sense, the power to control you, the power to, um, make you feel like you have to keep giving it power, right? So there's this myriad of ways that you can cope with this, with the trauma, the core wounds, the trapped emotions, all of those things that get stuck in your negative energy. That's the problem. These, these thoughts, feelings, emotions get stuck. They have an energy vortex. They have an energy about them and they live in your energy body. And that's what causes distortions. That's what causes you to have chronic pain many times. That's what causes you to have nightmares many times. So in order to break free of the victimhood and break free of these labels that you actually identify as, which in turn gives more life to the trauma and the event, you have to come to terms with breaking free of that identity, breaking free of that part of your character, breaking free and adopting a healthier identity. As an example, I had cancer twice, uh, 2010 and 2017. And I got caught up in that cancer survivor role, right? I got caught up in that, um, you know, I kicked cancer's ass, like all that stuff. And every, every anniversary that came around, you know, and, and when I went through my shadow work, I had to deal with that. I was like, dang, I was opening up this wound over and over and over again, but not really dealing with how I truly felt in that time. Not really dealing with the emotions that came with going through chemotherapy for seven months, you know, and all of the surgery and and all of the rehab and, and all the things that come with it. I had to deal with that and stop glossing over it as, uh, you know, pink banner, I kicked cancer's ass thing. Like, no, that's not exactly how it went down and I needed to be real. So that was my journey to letting go of those labels and stop the, the glossing over of a very traumatic event. It is traumatic to have that. It's traumatic to go through that. It is a trauma. And it's a trauma that gets perpetuated year after year after year that you continue to label yourself as a survivor. That's my opinion. You want to break free of that. So if you're in the heart space, soul space, energy space, head space, 
that you really want a healthier identity and you really want to go about your life in a healthier, more positive way. And you set your mind that you're going to fully and completely let these things that are really limiting you go. Sorry, there's something fly by my head. Um, That's when you make that decision. That's when you're empowered to make your shadow work journey begin because if you're still waffling and you're still taking part in things that are disempowering it it really is a um it's counterintuitive to shadow work you want to become empowered and take your power back when you go through your shadow work so you don't want to disempower yourself while you're trying to take your power back because it's just a waste of energy So you really have to prep yourself. You have to be prepared that number one, it's a lot of work. Number two, you have to let go of your fear of being hurt, right? You have to lean into the feelings. You have to go to the the event in your memory, go back to the day that it happened, feel the feels, let it go and come to terms with what was a lesson from that moment? What part did you play? Giving forgiveness to you and all involved. Giving love to you and all involved. Did you ever truly let yourself fully heal? And think about this. If you're constantly calling yourself a victim or a survivor of cancer, and you always have these labels that are negative, they carry negative vibration. Are you truly allowing yourself to heal and rise? To me, It is as if we put a cap on that. Like I can only be this good because I had that happen. And now I'm this many years out, but it's like, you're always waiting for the other shoe to drop. You got to let go of that. You got to free yourself from that burden with the decision. That's whenever you can make your first step. That's when you can make your first step of shadow work. So now if you're not committed and you're just bored, I don't know why anybody else would jump into shadow work, um, like a pretend shadow work and not really be serious about it because it's a lot of work. If you're not there, don't waste your time and don't waste anyone else's time because it is a waste of time. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of energy. Sit with it. When you are finally sick of being sick, when you are tired of being tired and when you are sick and tired of being sick and tired, And you want to make the changes and you understand it is all about what you do. You are in control. You have the power and you gave your power away and it's time to take it back. That's when you're ready to do do the work. You really have to have that fire within you to do it because it takes that fire to push you through to the end, to see it through to the end. So once you make it there (laughs) and you commit to self-love, like you have never loved yourself before. This is a huge hurdle for most of us because we are taught not to really give ourselves love. We're taught to give ourselves, uh, everyone in our life love, but not ourselves. That We're taught that that's selfish. It's really not. It's called self-love, self-care. And I want you to think about this. Many of us have the ideal of our love, right? Our greatest love and what that looks like and what that would feel like. And I want you to commit to being your greatest love. I want you to love you like no one else has ever loved you. I want you to share with yourself and the universe, sunrises, sunsets, beautiful meals, a nice glass of wine, if that's your thing. Um, I want you to like date yourself. I want you to be so comfortable spending time with yourself that if given the choice, you prefer to spend time with yourself. What does that do? It sounds antisocial. Well, in a way it is because you got to have to go back to ground zero. Okay. We develop codependencies and we develop bad habits of inviting people into our life just so that we don't pay attention to ourselves because that's where all the work really needs to be done and we like to be um focused on other people's issues instead of our own because that's much easier right so i'm just saying when you get here 
you got to really fully commit. And I want you to love you in a way that no one doubts. No one has any doubt that you truly care about yourself in a good, healthy, positive way. I'm not talking about being conceited. I'm not talking about going out and buying a bunch of crap. I'm talking about giving yourself love, compassion, healing, empathy, time in nature, good, healthy food, good, healthy water, and systematically cutting out of your life things that have disempowered you and made you unhealthy. That's what I'm talking about. That's how you show love to yourself. If you were dating someone and you wanted to make a really good impression about how much you cared about them and you made them this wonderful home cooked meal and it was the best ingredients and everything was perfect and chef's kiss, you're conveying to them how much time and effort and love you put into that meal to show them how much you care. Do it for yourself and drink that in. That is self-love. Self-love is an action. It's not a word. It's not a catchphrase. It's not magic. It requires commitment to your healthier self, to your inner child, to your divine feminine, to your divine masculine. You have a lot of work to do there. You've been spending your entire life ignoring this. It's time to start first with loving yourself. Whenever you're enjoying sunrises and you go, maybe I'll get myself a massage. Don't feel guilty about that. Heck yes. Go get yourself a massage. Enjoy it. Drink it in. Be the love of your life. Once you get there, you can begin to really do the work because now you have made yourself a priority and you have proven that you are a priority. And now you know what true love feels like. And you're like, Oh, this feels really good. This feels really good. It has no strings attached. There's no manipulation involved. We're not worried about what the other person is going to do. We just feel safe, love, kindness to our own body. It's, it's huge. It's huge. Trust me. So I also recommend at this time when you're spending all this time with yourself and you're telling no, you're getting invited to things and you're like, no, I'm just going to do my own thing. It's whenever you become introspective and a lot of stuff's going to start to come up. And this is when you want to start journaling. When you start journaling in the beginning, it's going to feel like your English teacher gave you an assignment. And that's not what it's about. You really want to bypass the brain and you want to just energy flow. You want to just channel, right? You want to just let what needs to come out, come out. So when I did this, this was the first time I did this was back in 2014 it was when I really started unpacking boxes of my life. And uh, five to six months later, I had written a book. Did I publish the book? No, it was a cathartic book. It was a book of trauma. It was a book of release. It was a book of emotions. It was a book of things I was happy about and things I wasn't so happy about, but it needed to come out of me. I had held on to it for so long. It was the first step I took and truly healing myself in shadow work. I didn't even know what shadow work was. I just followed my nudges and that's what I felt like I should do. I had never done anything like that before. And it really did help me. I had to go way back to childhood. I really did because I, I tried to not go back to childhood, being totally honest with you. And then <laughs> I was hot and heavy, flowing of emotions, tears, tears, tears. And I realized the tears and the emotion emotion was coming from something that happened many, many years before the event I was actually writing about. So that's what you got to follow your nudges and you got to keep going till you get to the bottom of it. It's multi-layered. When you think about it, if you're five years old and some bad shit happens, that's you probably soul contracted it, but you never dealt with it because you're five. And then you're 15 and there's another layer of trauma. And then you're 25 and there's another layer of trauma. Now you're 55 and you're ready to deal with it. Well, you've got 50 years of layers to go through. So you guys got to start somewhere. And journaling out stuff, really, the best way I can describe it is it, it's like the top layer of a wound. It's just full of anything and everything it could pick up. And you just want to get it out. Put a big black X on it. 
burn it in fire, send it to the violet flame, let go of it. When you start to do that, you're, you're taking some of those layers away and you'll continue to journal. You'll find that it becomes a respite. You'll find that it becomes your solace and you'll just keep books with you and you just journal. You just write, 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 write. Maybe you'll start to write down messages. Maybe you'll start to write down thoughts, ideas, concepts, who knows, just let it flow, let it flow because it's safe. It's you and it's your thoughts and you can write it down in your book. Things that need to be transmuted and transformed and let go, do so. Things that you want to hold on to, keep them. But it is letting the energy come forth. That's the first step. The second step is that you really do truly let go of all this, that you don't just become this emotional soup where you're just in there swimming with all the pain of the past. You want to truly let it go. That's where your LFG comes in. So anything that you're you're having to deal with from a shadow work perspective, you want to give it love. My first step is truly forgiveness. I want to forgive everything and everyone involved. Forgive it. Clean slate. When I go through true forgiveness, that for me is a natural progression to sending things love and then following up with gratitude for the lesson learned because honestly it really is a gracious thing for for beings to follow through with their agreement with you and your soul contract to provide you these opportunities to learn and to grow and to be a better you that is the ultimate goal so now you've let go of some things and you're letting go of the feels and you don't feel so weighted down and you begin to heal and healing means feeling and it sucks sometimes to feel to go back and feel but it is it is it is beneficial it really truly is beneficial okay these are just a few things i'm going to run through them but they may be exactly the trigger that keeps coming up for you what caused you to doubt yourself as a child do you project fear, unhealthy fear, onto others? What emotions do you try to avoid? What makes you afraid to feel? What are you afraid of happening again? Who hurt you? Can you forgive them? How do you show up for others but fail to do so for yourself? Toxic relationship traits. What do you bring into a relationship that has nothing to do with that other person? How can you be kinder to yourself? What can you forgive yourself for? Do you avoid something that you have loved for a long time due to a trauma associated with it? What would you say to your 13-year-old self? What is one thing you do that makes you forget about time? What can you do to make your inner child feel safe and feel proud? These are not meant to be rushed through. They're just points where you can start to dig in. If none of that resonates with you, great. That's not where you begin, but you know what your triggers are and that's where you begin. So it is a list. Some of it falls under the inner child stuff. Some of it falls under the divine feminine stuff. Some of it falls under the divine masculine stuff. In case you didn't know, within all of us, we are a, we should be a balance of divine masculine, divine feminine, and with a healed inner child. Most of us do not come to the table with that. We have to work at that. The way you start is you choose to start and you choose you. You may have spent your entire life choosing other people to give your energy to, to give your healing to, to give your love to. But now you have to choose yourself. When you're there, don't let anybody else talk you out of it. And this is why. You will have surrounded yourself with energy vampires. It's what we do. Because it it really does keep us so busy at, at handling all their requests for our time and energy that we don't have any time to think about ourselves. And that's the point. It's It's escapism. We are escaping our own journey. So whenever you decide to put yourself first, they are not going to like that you have chosen to love yourself more. 
They are not going to like that you have chosen to tell them no. And they are going to make you feel guilty for asking for one moment for yourself. And you have to be prepared to love yourself enough and be so committed, committed to your own healing journey that you go, that is your problem. If you cannot accept that I have healing to do for myself and it has nothing to do with you in this now moment, that is your problem. Again, I'm not going to participate. Block them, turn the phone off, whatever you got to do. Shut the door. Like, I don't know. You have to enforce your health, healthy boundaries. Healthy boundaries are for you to enforce. We don't control other people, right? We only control ourselves. So the vortex you're in is going to change. The dynamics of the vortex is going to change. You may get a lot of pushback and then they fall away. Because as soon as you start to heal yourself, your frequency is going to start to rise. And those negative low frequency beings aren't going to be as comfortable around you anymore. Right? So they're only going to stick around for a little while and then they're going to bug out. You may look around and go, no one wants to spend time with me now. No one has, has called. No one has texted. I want you to see that as a blessing. I want you to see that as a blessing. I went through that myself. When I stopped being the, the go-to for everyone's drama, when I put my foot down and said, no, I'm not going to do that anymore. I wasn't funny anymore. I didn't fit their idea of a good time. And so they fell away from me and I allowed that. And everyone fell away because Really and truly, I had surrounded myself with so many toxic people. So my vortex is completely different now. And it took that transition period of, of introspection and isolation where I healed me. And then I had a better version, an empowered version with a healed inner child and a balanced divine masculine, divine feminine that I could share with the world. And I hope that is for, for you too. That is a gift that only you can give yourself. We, I, VioletLotusEnergy.com, we can help you navigate things. We can help you confirm things. We can help get you clear. We can help you in this topsy-turvy world. But at the end of the day, every day, you have to choose you and you have to do the work for you. At the end of the day, no one can do this work for you. I have had people go, into it a little bit and then it starts to get real and they're like just tell me what I have to do don't tell me I have shadow work tell me what I have to do that's not how it works you have to know where you're going in your shadows I'm not diving into your shadows I can recognize them because it's not me it's always easier to recognize it when it's not you right and I and even if we do this in a super loving way it's still your shadows and you still have to come to terms with them the way you choose to or not. When you up the ante to those beings to spend time with you, when you make sure that they're in your highest and best good, when you make sure they have a soul and that they're going to actually add value to your life besides take, 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 the landscape of your life is going to change. I see that as a blessing because you are letting go of the things that are karmic, that were meant to show you lessons. They were meant to make you uncomfortable and provide you with a friction that allowed for you to grow and evolve and transmute and, and transform and change into the soul being you promised yourself you would be now. I hope this video has helped you. Please visit violetlotusenergy.com. Check out our services. The QET session is what you get started with. And we will be happy to help you along your ascension journey. Have a great weekend.